on Slack if you want. Thanks. I have. Thanks. I have. Oh no, you're echoing because I had, didn't have the stream sound turned off. Disaster. <laughs> so I just I, I just went, thanks, I have. Thanks, I have. Thanks, I have. Over and over and over again. That's the perfect start to a stream, isn't it? Yes, and I was like, what is what is SP doing? And then I was like, nope. Just, me just messing with you. I'm a dingus. As per <laughs> usual, the, the solution came down to, I'm a dingus. As with so many things, yeah. Yeah. Let's see, we got some viewers. So That's exciting. We like those. Oh, wow. Three whole viewers. Three whole viewers. Oh, my phone is hey, telling guys. me that uh, Chess League TV is streaming chess. Thank you, phone. Hey, Sesquipedia. Delism. Ah, he's, uh, he it. was the white player of our first game. Indeed. No problem at all. Yeah, Thanks no problem. for watching. Hopefully, uh, hopefully educational. And if you have any thoughts that you want to share. Oh, you only have one hour. That's fine. Uh, good. We, uh, good you're going first then. Yeah, we, we will probably take an hour. That's <laughs> beautiful for us. <laughs> Pe pedalism. Pedalism, that means like relating to the foot, right? Yeah, so I think it's, so the word that springs to mind is sesquipedalianism, which is using long words ah, unnecessarily. Yeah, that that word jumped to my mind too. I know exactly what that means. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would, being such a linguist. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he's, saying, he's saying not quite, not quite Similar? correct, SP. Oh, I think he was saying that about feet. Oh, that's probably fair. <laughs> okay, uh, sesquipedalism is an accepted shortened version of sesquipedalism, you, which I feel, I feel like that detracts from the point of it being a really long word. Oh well. But where do you get this? Like, how did you know that? I know lots of things. But this why is, that? But... <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I think it's interesting, oh and it's a God. good name. That that is a good name. I'm I'm learning something I'm learning something new today. Wow. That was really something. Teaching chess and learning words. Yeah. <laughs> exactly Flinner. <laughs> uh Flinner, another player that's up on the docket. We'll have to wait two hours for that one. Yeah, really. But it's worth it. It's is it? I feel like he's a better player than either of us, but <laughs> Oh, oh, I meant it's worth it for everyone else, yeah. Probably not going to learn too much from us there, Flana. Uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll give, see. Give you lots of praise. We'll give you lots of praise. Yeah, there you go. That, that's that's the plan. A nice that's little the main reason for nice little ego boost. Anyway, uh, why don't we get started? Just because um, we have some people, and you know, it, people will will trickle in as per always. So um, last week, if you didn't catch it, we did the um, what should we call it? The the lower board game reviews, and me being the lazy terrible channel host that I am. I haven't put that on YouTube yet, so I think after this I'm going to put both of them on YouTube. Um, but today we're going to be venturing up into the, the higher boards, so we're expecting to see um, slightly more logical chess, fewer blunders, um, and uh, overall just uh, more straightforward games of chess. Um, although I'd say straightforward, we had some very messy games as well, but messy doesn't necessarily mean badly played chess. Um, so let's take a look at this game between sesquipedalism and K-Knight moves. Uh, this was on board three, so getting up in the ranks, and we have ourselves a nice Slav defense. Uh, just going to check in, SP, uh, you're seeing the same moves that I play on the board? I'm seeing them on the study, yeah. Great. I don't have the stream live. Oh, yeah, the stream is live as well. No, but I'm just checking that you're seeing them in the study. Oh, right. Yeah, I see them. Okay, great, great. So here we have a normal Slav defense, super main line. Black plays uh, the Moscow. And white decides to go bishop h4, which is the anti-Moscow. Um, the, the, the calm way to play 
if it were is to go bishop takes f6. Um, and then, you know, this is a position where white has given up the, the bishop pair, but he has much better development than black, and overall is, you know, it's a pretty equal position. Um, however, here, the anti-Moscow is very interesting because it's actually a gambit. Uh, because after d takes c4, uh, black is taking this, and he's saying that after e4, uh, g5, bishop g3, b5, he's going to hold on to this pawn. So this would be the main line of the anti-Moscow. So uh, when you're playing bishop h4 as white, you have to be willing to play the position down a pawn, as this is really the only way to play. However, um, the white player got pretty confused in the opening, and they, they I think they got mixed up with their lines. So after bishop h4, uh, black played d takes c4 right away, um, which is fine, totally fine. White went e4, and after g5, uh, as I said earlier, the, the pretty much the only move in the position is uh, bishop g3, but white played knight takes g5, which uh, is a piece sacrifice that simply doesn't work in this position. Um, so I think I know what they're getting mixed up with. Yes, and sesquipedalism saying in chat he's getting mixed up with the Botvinnik variations, which is what I assumed here. Do you, do you know what I'm referencing, uh, SP? So that's without h6 first, right? Yeah, so here there's a line that goes as such. b5, and here white goes e5, and now after h6, bishop h4, g5, now white can play knight takes g5 because he's guaranteed to get his piece back on f6. Um, so white is getting the piece back, and therefore, you know, this is a playable position for white. But yeah, and there's there's crazy amounts of theory in both of these lines. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, all of all of the Slav and semi-Slav, there's like twenty moves of theory, whatever you do. Um, it's an interesting position, though. Yeah, but the problem is here after d takes c4, e4, g5, because white doesn't have this e5 tempo. Knight takes g5 just doesn't work, because white is not uh, getting the piece back after h takes, bishop takes, and bishop e7, this knight's not pinned, so e5 is not winning the piece. So this is already a pretty large blunder from the white player early in the opening. I do understand, though, when you like, you're like, oh, I know this is the move, and then you play it, and you're like, wait, what's going on here? So, I, I would say, though, like, if you're sacking a piece in the opening and you think it's theory, you should at least, like, double-check the variations to make sure, because here, I think if you examine this, you would realize, like, hold on, this is not a position I'm supposed to have where I just lose a piece for, for pretty much nothing. So, this was, um, this is already a pretty big mix-up. Any, anything to add, SP? Yeah, just... So there's this, is it a saying, is it a, a phrase, trust but verify? It's more about, like, information, but it applies a lot to openings as well. Like, you should remember stuff, but you should also understand why what you're playing is good, why it's bad, why it works. Um, so, yeah, just, like, double-checking your move. So in my game yesterday, I remembered that there was a move knight e2, but I just didn't like it. I didn't, I couldn't remember how to play it. Even though I remembered that that's the move, I played knight f3 instead because I was more comfortable playing that. Uh, but I, I actually still thought about it even though I could remember the theory. Yeah, and I mean, it makes yeah. sense because like, if you get a theoretical position but you have no idea what you're doing, you're probably going to misplay the position. So, yeah, just being willing to like think for yourself, especially when you're going in for something so sharp and so like clearly game-defining. You have to make sure that you understand why it's working and why why it's correct. Uh, because here, I would already classify the white position as, as lost. I mean, he has some compensation. He has t one pawn. Mm. He has one pawn. It, it is a past H pawn, so there's something going on there. Um, the black king is a little bit unsafe, but this is not great. Okay, and uh, bishop takes c4. So... At this point, 
you know, everything for black has been pretty forced. Like, okay, white took your pawn. You have to take back. You have to play bishop e7. And this is like the first move where black really gets a choice of what they want to play. So at this point, as the black player, I would be thinking, okay, white messed up. I'm probably winning. So I need to take a really long think as to how I want to persecute my advantage. So, uh, SP, do you have any ideas? How would you play this position as, as black? How would you try and, and persecute your, your piece advantage here? Mm, yeah, it's tricky um, because we don't have that much space. I Well, I want to get castled because I feel like the position can sort of bust open. I'm not very developed. Are you are you like castling short or space. long? I want to castle long. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously it's going to take a little bit of time to get there. Um, it's kind of really it's kind of hard to develop to... both of these pieces, yeah. right? Because exactly. they they uh, they both want to go to this d7 square. Yeah, honestly it's quite difficult. Um I don't know, how would you do it? So, uh, first things first, I'm noticing some tactics here. Um, and I know it, I, this is bad of me, because as black, I shouldn't be thinking tactically when I'm underdeveloped, but I wonder if this works. Uh, okay, so we take on e7. It's this whole thing, right? Oh, yeah, counting, counting's hard. Ooh, okay, this is actually gonna be complicated. So, because, Everything is forced. So I have to play rook h6, right? Because the rook was uh, hanging. Yeah. I uh, have to play. Wait, 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 no, you can. You could take. Uh, you could take on b2. Uh, after bishop f6, no, I can't. Er, oh. I can, but I'm giving material back, right? I'm not sure which is better, because we get that. So we've got two pieces for the rook. But this I don't love. Right, because I'm going to go bishop f6, and I'm just going to go h8. Yeah, but I mean, I've got knight d7 here. OK, OK, bishop f6 was a, was a not, OK, not the best square, not the best square. I like, don't think it's forced to play. My question is, H6. like, how do you how do you stop h8? <laughs> I just go, um, <laughs> say I go bishop g7, and I go h4, h5, h6, h7, h8. Uh, I mean, I could play like f5, king f7. Yeah. Oops, I've highlighted things. Are, are, are you stopping me from doing what I wanted? Yeah. Are you? What are you doing? Playing... I'm going to take your bishop. I know. I Yes, I, I get that. <laughs> okay, it's I not, don't it, think this position's great. It's not as clear as I thought. But I, I don't like this for, for black. I think I think white's h-pawn becomes immensely powerful in that position. Um, so I think rook h6 makes sense, right? Sure. Yeah, if you're not, if you're not taking on b2, then this makes more sense. And then bishop g5... And rook, I don't know, somewhere, g6, h5. Probably g6 to target this. Yeah. And this just looks like it's falling apart for white. Right, this is why I wanted to play rook h6. Yeah, yeah, this looks better. Well, I think white is close to losing here. Like, okay, where do you put your bishop? Oh my god, do you put it on c1? Well, we can... We can... Can we do that? No, no, because this 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 falls apart. This is my point. No, no, you play bishop c1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And this is winning for white. It's something for white. It's better than what we had before. Yeah. I think I think it's winning for white. Like you get some pawns, but <laughs> hello. I mean, yeah, your pieces are not great. 
Yeah, okay, so maybe this knight takes e4 stuff doesn't quite work. And I would believe it doesn't quite work because, you know, Black, didn't, Black didn't develop any of his pieces and he's trying to start tactics. That's why I said, like, I probably shouldn't be doing this. I probably shouldn't be starting tactics when White has developed all their pieces and, you know, I only have two, like, kind of developed pieces. What about... Can I do, can I play, be, be like, it's a Slav? Oi, um, <laughs> it's a move. Uh, I'm guessing sacking the knight does not work here. You, you're going to sack it on the other side? I want to be aggressive. Like, do do the to... same thing on the other side? Uh, I can tell you for a fact that sacking the knight just will not work. This is no. It doesn't look great. Yeah. No chance. I, I'm threatening queen a5 as well. Yeah. So you just have to that. trade pieces. Okay. So that, that's totally ridiculous. So, but you have a problem here because where's your bishop going? Back. And I do this. Hmm. Can I take here? Yeah. You can. And how are you defending your d4 pawn all of a sudden? Okay, but now things are getting traded and then my piece will start to show. Mm, probably. Although I might be able to castle. Uh, you you will, I agree. Uh, first off, I have to ask myself, am I taking on b2? Sure, I'm a greedy boy. I'll take on b2. Yeah, this is not ideal. I like what what's going on here? You get you end up I end up with a more simplified position and I have a pawn. You have a pawn for the piece. I don't think that's good enough. I think this is working for black. I think playing b5 with the idea of just tempoing this knight out of the defense is sort of working. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, we're down a piece as white. Yeah, that's the thing, right? You sacked a piece, you didn't really get anything. So Black can start pushing you around, and any trade is really going to favor the black side. So it's hard for white to play in a manner where, you know, trading pieces just is losing. Not losing, but, you know, it makes your position worse to trade pieces. So I think b5 is good. I think if you're not going to play b5, you should probably play knight d7. Yeah, that makes sense, and bring the knight to, to b6. Well, I think... I. I it, my idea behind knight d7 is, okay, I don't know what white plays. White, say white... Well, white's probably not kingside castling, right? <laughs> uh... Say white puts the queen somewhere. Where where are we putting the queen? Uh... B3? <laughs> Try another sack? <laughs> On e6? Yeah. That's not going to work. No, it's not, but it's fun to think about. <laughs> but like, I think I, I think I can play either b5 or c5 here. Is sort of I mean, my idea. This is probably fine because we're then defending. Yeah, I don't love having the knight on b6 because I I want to play this move to get this bishop here, but maybe it's fine. Yeah, uh, we can put the queen here. Yeah, but then you're. Then I go. Then I go here. Uh, you okay. can't. You can't take it. <laughs> Stop trying to take it. And no, I, I wasn't trying to take it that time. I'm getting my pieces out. Is sort of my point. Okay, but now maybe, maybe your king's a little bit scared. No. Can I? No. One, two, three, four. Can I? Push. Which one, T5? Ah, because you're going to... Hmm. So I was going to play E takes, but then after I castle long, my bishop on E7 is going to hang. Maybe this is more than I gave you credit for. And we can't really take the other way because the B pawn hang. Yeah, I wasn't going to worry about that. I was going to... Ignore I mean, that the one. End, it hangs. Yeah, no, I, I understand. But no, this is actually very problematic. This you've 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 definitely stirred up some trouble here. Okay, I've misplayed this. This is not good. 
So black doesn't really have that much time because white is more developed and that break is gonna just rip open the center. Yeah, that's that's unpleasant. So let me see how we got there. Knight d7, you played queen e2. Okay, that's probably a good move. And then after b5, bishop b3. Okay, let me not play b5. Let me instead try c5. Hmm. Aren't you, oh, and then if I push, you want to play e5? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I hadn't thought that far. <laughs> I just wanted to break because I want. I want to play d5. What if um, I? Can I take this? No, I can't really. Right? Can I take this? Is it so disastrous? It's probably disastrous. Uh, Rob Sob who is also someone that we're going to be looking at their game later, has said, in the position... How do we get there? Oh, oh, oh! So, Can we play knight takes d5? Yeah, because there's this this bishop on g5 is undefended. Yeah, that's a nice little elastic... What is it? What's it called? Elastic band? Uh, I, Something uh, like that. I heard it called a... Well, no, that's not a reloader. Um, And this is with check as well. So. Yeah, that's a yeah. problem. Okay. So tech. I was actually considering this beforehand and then pushing, or take with the knight, whatever. Yeah, because then I really, I really can't play e takes. I, so I guess black is queenside castling here, but then you're getting a third pawn all of a sudden, which does make me wonder about white's prospects. Boomerang. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, uh, sesquipedalism saying seems like the b5, b4 plan was the simplest. I agree. It looks like it sort of solves your problems. You go b5, I don't know, you put this bishop on e2, right? I go b4, and I'm just, your center falls apart before you get to use it. Mm. So this seems yeah. like the way for black to proceed. It's, um, it's analogous to something I do in the Nimzo Indian, where in the Nimzo sometimes... Black will play an early h6, or sorry, an early bishop g... Oh god, let me learn to speak English. Sometimes white will play an early bishop g5, and you go h6, g5, g4, you kick the knight off f3, and then you take on d4. It's a similar thing where you're getting uh, two tempi to hit the knight off c3, and then you win the e4 pawn. Yeah, it's something you see uh, Magnus do quite a lot in the, the titled arenas as well. Just, like, throw his pawns forward and just, like, right from the beginning oh yeah the, like the, the flank pawns yeah like even if you're not winning a pawn straight like this like it's very it's very uh unsettling yeah it gains, it gains a lot of space bullet obviously and this is classical <laughs> but the same things apply <laughs> clearly um yeah this looks like the best way to play okay in the game we saw the move rook g8 which i guess it does put some pressure against the g2 pawn um but it it does seem to prompt white to play a move he wanted to play anyway. So I'm not sure about this rook g8 move. It, uh, I think the rook was maybe well placed here, stopping counterplay with the h-pawn, and uh, white is getting to make a move he wanted to make anyway. Um, Nicolad, uh, c takes d5 in that position would hang uh, bishop takes b5, which is why we weren't playing that. Um, and here black and went... This Knight h7. This is the one. This can't be right. Yeah, we kind of want to just keep developing. Yeah, it's like, I get that Black Black sort of like feels like he's under pressure because his king is in the middle. But this is not the way to deal with the pressure, to underdevelop your pieces. Um, the way to, to deal with the pressure is to make sure all your pieces are playing and to... Uh, fight for control of the center to make sure that white is not breaking through in the center. So again, I think this works. Like not, nothing has changed. I think this works. Um, and this is a way to develop your pieces and fight against white's central control. Um, or if you're not playing that, again, I think knight d7 is probably the best move. But yeah, you got to get these pieces out. This is not helping you get your pieces out and you're, you're demoting one of your own pieces. Yeah, and it's kind of similar to 
when you're evaluating porn exchanges, like which pawns are actually getting exchanged. Like after this little set of moves, your knight has moved from here to here and the bishops are gone, but like your knight is just worse. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, there's nothing. And here, to do with it. here, white went, back. here, white went queen f3. Um, I would definitely be looking at the move e5 here, just trying to clamp the knight out of the game, and really clamp the bishop out of the game as well. That's interesting. That's a good move. I wouldn't probably have considered that. And actually, I, I also have this idea. As it, this comes later in the game, but th this idea immediately looks problematic. And I guess we're not worried about this? Uh, that seems to give me Tempe that I enjoy having. Mm, or, okay. excuse me, that seems to give me this Tempe that I enjoy having. Yeah, I'm just having to go back and grovel. Uh, you had maybe F, F something there. F something? F5 or F6. Uh, isn't that pinned? <laughs> Just kidding! Woo! <laughs> uh, you're correct. Rook G7, only move. <laughs> Yeah, but now, like, now this stuff happens. Yeah, this is just, this is losing. And, or, or even, uh, instead of that, maybe just long castles and put a rook on g1 or something. Yeah, just stop the activity. Well, and once, once a rook lands on g1, you're, you're having problems saving this knight. I'm more interested in the king. The only reason I like castling is it stops this check. Oh, after an 84? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good point as well. I missed that. That would win material actually, because this bishop. Uh, no, it wouldn't. Ooh, tricky. Ninety four check. Um, you the king moves say to f one. Oh, maybe not to f one. Uh, the king moves say to d one, uh, and you cannot actually accept this piece because of a little forkaroni up here. But, uh, of course, you have disrupted white's coordination, so you don't have to take. You can play some other move. Although, what exactly that other move is remains to be maybe seen. Maybe, like, step up with the king. Those are dangerous words, my friend. Yeah, I'm just thinking now I am threatening. Those are dangerous <laughs> <laughs> and if you move, I'm taking here. Yeah, okay, this this is something. So, I, I like queenside castles here. Uh, you're right, to avoid the, the check. So yeah, this um, this e5 move looks a little problematic. I don't. I think being greedy is totally besides the point. I think you have to start finding a way for this knight to join the game. Yeah, I really like this. I really like this e5 move. Yeah, it's just trying to, to point out that, like, hey, when you when you move your knight out of the center, I'm going to occupy the center and really deny the knight rejoining the game. So I think this was a good try. White went queen f3 instead, which does allow me to play knight f6 if I desire. I think I do desire. <laughs> In the what was chosen in the game? In the game Queen B4. Ah, this actually might be a good move. Well, yeah. it's un it's unclear, right? Yeah. Because so his point is that he's he's forking these two pieces. Um and if as in the game bishop b3 is played, he actually gets to take on d4. So, pop quiz. We have a choice of which pawn we're going to give up. Which pawn would you elect to uh, to jettison something pretentious? I'm almost considering jettisoning, jettisoning not the a knight and a rook. This. Sorry. Oh, ooh, but hold on. There's there's some tactics here, my friend. You want to take on G? Yeah. Things I don't are have to take that. <laughs> that's true. What are you playing if you are not taking that? 
right, I go. I don't know. I don't like this. My king is just in the center forever. Um... For for white or for black? Because I think white is gaining a little bit too much <laughs> time with what I've done there. I'm not sure. Um, B2... Yeah, I don't mind so much losing this D this D4 pawn to be honest, because really? I bring my rook over. I I know that you think like the B pawn is less valuable. But and that, am I then castling kingside into this rook file? Uh, well, I think I think you just lose too much time doing this. So, b three. To me, this is extremely weakening. I want to try and take advantage of this knight. I tried to take it with rook takes yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking back. I'm taking that back. I don't think that's great. I think, I, I think I don't mind this so much. Really, I feel like you're you're losing. You you lose your center. And then, yeah, and then, you know, I, I, so this was actually the game. Uh, the game was bishop b3, queen takes d4, rook d1, and now queen f6. Yeah, it's, I, I see your point, and my computer is lagging massively, sorry. If no worries. Scroll too far. Um, so I assume you want to... I just want to play queen d3. Yeah, and after this, maybe, like, this and then we're then we're breaking things open. Uh, why not? Well, I was gonna go rook b one actually. Oh, we could probably. Oh, was that trapped? No, not quite. Uh, actually, almost. Can we just castle though? Yeah, castle is a good move, probably. Yeah, I think I think castle play d five. Well, so no. here here castles black. I think needs to be extremely careful. I think they might want to play queen a three here. Because I'm I'm worried about some like stuff happening with a four. Yeah, that pretty much forces this. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not trapping the queen, but this is like you, these pieces, man. <laughs> it's not great. Yeah, I mean d five is gonna crush. Yeah, right. It's like I got everybody coming to the party, and you got. One guest. And it's a valuable one. <laughs> yeah, right? The, the one guest is not so happy to be at the party. He has no friends at the party. Um, yeah, so I, I don't love giving up the center pawn, because it feels like, you know, a lot of the play came through the center pawn. Like, how, you said, how are we going to win? We're going to play d5. Well, if there's no d pawn, you don't play d5. So I don't yeah, I, no, I don't love right. this decision. Mm, you're right. It's, you do you do gain some time though. So I I understand why it was played, but just on like a principled level, it's like you give a b two, and you play for the development and the center. Yeah, I think you have to appreciate that d five is your way to bust this position open, and then you then you make that decision. Yeah, ag agreed, point. agreed. Um, if okay. You're not thinking d five, then yeah, maybe. It doesn't make as much sense to keep d1. Uh, but you have to be thinking d5, right? You see this king here. You see the king is at least like four moves from castling. How are you going to get at the king? You're going to open the central files. That's got to be d5. Or you play e5 to restrict the knight and you like sack something. But that would be a different, more ambitious way. <laughs> <laughs> or you do this and you, you play your rook onto d d1 and you say i've got an open file I, just, it's not as good obviously but just to demonstrate I what i what... what i mean by this e5 stuff so if you know say black does you know just tries to develop or something i'm going to play e5 and my idea is actually to play d5 at some point actually first of yeah, all I, mean... I, I hit your i hit your unprotected knight on h7 by surprise yeah, maybe you have to come around here. Yeah, I, th I figured the knight was going to f8 at some point. And yeah, we have this knight e4, d6 up, and then I my other idea, just to demonstrate, was at some point to play at, like straight away d5 and actually sack for this. Yeah, assuming that this did not drop. Oh, that is hanging. So yeah, I'd have to prepare this more. But just to demonstrate, uh, something pretentious pointed out, of course this doesn't work right away, um, but playing something like this looks extremely dangerous for the black king. If, of course, yeah, I mean, this is like mate threats straight away. Yeah, so this is another way oh, to try no, and open the center. Likely. Yeah, but but threats, big threats, big threats. So 
So there are two ways to play to open the center. You either need to be playing for d5 or e5, d5, um, and neither of those really work when you don't have a d-pawn, surprisingly. So don't love giving up this d-pawn. You do gain some time, of course, but it uh, doesn't feel great. Queen e3. Uh, what would you play here for black? I, I mean, black's not totally out of the woods yet. He still has trouble developing all his pieces, so how would you try and get this developed? Let me just flip the board. Um, it's still really tough. Yeah, right? It's like it's still not so clear how you get your pieces developed. Yeah. I, I'm not a huge fan of the position. Um, <laughs> knight d7 to... So, so knight d7 D6, played, in the, I played in the game. Yeah. I, it's tough. I don't love you. Yeah, you you've said it. I don't love this piece going to b six, especially when it doesn't have the d five square. Like a lot of times, you go to b six to go to the d five square. From b six, this knight really has no prospect whatsoever. So maybe we can go like knight e five. Although is is white playing f four here? Yeah. So here, white played f four, which um, makes actually quite a bit of sense. Although I have to say, the, the white king is also, all of a sudden, not the safest king on the board. Yeah, this is kind of a, a game of unsafe kings. Yeah. Um, I don't hate f4, though. I, I, I don't either. It's, it's definitely in the spirit. You're down a piece. Um, you have to stir up some action, so f4 definitely makes some sense. It also, as you mentioned, stops the move knight e5, which was definitely a desirable move from black. Um, Yago gave an interesting suggestion, which was to play e5 in this position, which was something that I was looking at here as well. Um, and the idea is, all of a sudden, I actually have a place for this bishop to go. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um... It does, you are opening up against your f7 pawn. So the question you have to ask is, does some disaster befall? I mean, maybe you can just trade off the bishop. Are you are still up a piece. Say I castle. Oh, really? Um, okay. Hmm. This was sort of my idea. I want to get this rook on the f file open against the king. Yago says take on h4 and win. I'm not so convinced yeah, that taking on h4 is that, winning. That's what I was looking at, but yeah, I'm not convinced either. There is... No, no, just kidding. I was going to say bishop h3, but just kidding. Queen takes h3. <laughs> Take on b3. I agree with that. Take on h4. This is just win. I am not convinced this is just win. Show me how you just win. I can't put my queen anywhere on the f-file? Is this real life? How can I not put my queen anywhere on the f-file? Just to demonstrate. <laughs> or F2, same thing, actually. Yep. How atrocious. And this is almost mating as well. Yeah, it's somethinging. Can I do this? Ooh. Uh... <laughs> Man, this is sharp. Um... Uh, worst case, I can just take that. Queen f3. Queen f3? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see. Or, or how, how are you, are you taking with the knight, I assumed? Yeah. I just... <laughs> you're going to say this, but I don't... No, this it doesn't work. If we take with the queen. Uh, if we take here, then we have this with check. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my point. No, I take the rook. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, but... If we step up, then it's not with check. Unless Who cares? No, no, I take it, I make a queen. Uh, make a queen. Make a queen. Where's your mate? 
Do I have a queen? If we do it with... Yeah, I guess. But if we do it with check, we win this queen. Okay, sure. I would rather be up a knight than have two queens on board. I, I'm making a queen, but whatever. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this works. No, so... Um. Yeah, the, the other thing is, after... So e6 is one idea. I'm also... No, so I don't have time to go, like, queen d3, right? Because of knight h3, and I'm probably getting mated here. Am I getting mated here? Yes, I am. Uh, There's this. Right. All right, take the queen, that's all. Oh, okay, I'll, that'll do. Yeah, whatever you do there. So I don't have time for this queen d3 stuff, but my, my point is, after e6, if you take with the knight... Oh, oh, oh. wait, sorry. Uh, what if we go here? Knight of three. Oh, just kidding. Rook takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this... But, okay, so very at the very least, I have perpetual. This is perpetual. Yeah. So at the very least, I have perpetual. I think I might also just have this. Yeah, that'll do it. Which is something. So, yeah, I think... Anyway, we should go back, because we're a little bit too far away from the game here. Um, but... The, the point is there's it gets very sharp. Uh, e5 e5 is definitely interesting to just try and get the the pieces out. Um, I think I went a little overboard for white if we're being honest. Also, do you have some issue with the queen just coming to the d file somewhere? Because now your bishop well, can't really come out, I don't think. No, this doesn't yeah. work. Doesn't work at all. Yeah, it does. Does it? I don't believe you. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It looks. It looks like e five is is just good. Or at least I can't refute it. So e five looks like a good way to develop the pieces, and you you prevent e five from white. Um, Knight d7, I think, is also fine, because black is not, or sorry, white is not ready to play e5, but I think after f4, I think you have to play e5 here. I think allowing e5 from white is, like, trouble town. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. And it, it comes back to... Man, my cats are making a lot of noise. Um... It comes back to controlling the center, right? Uh, you're getting attacked. What's the best way to, you know, stop the attack? You have to stop the bleeding in the center. So this is, first of all, it's not really going to open a file against your king because you're going to blockade on the e5 square. Um, and you're finding ways to get your remaining pieces out into the game. And you're stopping white from just, you know, Curb stomping you in the middle of the board, so I think I think this was necessary. Yeah, and I go knight takes e five, and I go there. Great. Oh no, that's that's bad. Um, yeah, I, I would trade queens there, right? Yeah, this is not good. Yeah, so here I've I've solved kind of my problems. My king is still in the middle, but your king is also still in the middle. So, and suddenly my pieces are actually existing, which is what I've wanted for the entire game. Like here, I have bishop e6, right? Yeah. Come, coming. And the more we trade, the safer it is. And the safer and, you know, the, 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 the more winning the I more am. Winning. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. But after f4, black went rook takes g2. Um, and it's starting to feel like we're, we're asking for it a little bit. e5. Excellent. Queen g7. Knight e4. Excellent. And here, I did not like the black move. Black went king e7. Mm. And the reason I don't like this is I am of the opinion that this king belongs on f8. I don't see yeah, why it would be safer on e7 than on f8. So if you're going to make a king move, I think the king move has to be king f8. Um, Although I'm not entirely clear why we're making a king move in the first place here. Uh, yeah, I guess one issue is 
Uh, say we do. Uh, oops. Not bad. Uh, not the move I meant to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to play a nothing move. Then we have check. Now, if we go here, then this is going to win material. Okay, that's a fair point. So we have to be somewhat mindful of that. Yeah, I um, guess you could always just step up then. So uh, I will say I don't. I, I start to not mind your knight b6 idea, and the reason is um, I have this square all of a sudden. So this this knight b6 idea doesn't look quite as silly to me because the knight actually heads to a very green pasture over here. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And now after knight c6, I just go king f8, and I don't see any immediate disaster befalling me, I don't think. After queen c5, I guess I'm playing king g8 and saying, we're good, I got this. Can we do something like that? It is a no, legal move. Not. And I will take it with any piece. Okay. <laughs> this is just not good. It doesn't work. Yeah. And finally, my knight, my knight does something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's yeah. The, that's not working. So, so this this looks like a good way to play to go knight b six to get the knight to d five. But king e seven, man, that king is not safe on e seven. So I'm not sure why we voluntarily uh, played this move. After queen c5, there's a forced mate with queen g3. That's probably true. <laughs> I, I missed this check. <laughs> uh, that, that, that is actually indeed a forced maiden. Uh, mm, yes, it's forced maiden 3. So yes, that would be very good. Um, so king e7. And I was actually watching this game live, and I think I came up with a really good idea. So I'm going to throw this one to the chat. Uh, what would you play for white here? I'm not sure it's winning, but I think white can put a lot of pressure on black um, if white finds a good move here. I think I came up with a really strong idea. Rozos, uh, I assume this is Rozo, Rob, Rob Saab, 97, saying rook takes d7. Um, rook takes d7, I will recapture on d7. And show me your brilliant follow-up. I guess the queen chat. Queen c5 makes some sense. I will move to d8 to avoid knight d6 check. Mm. Notice that your knight can't move due to aforementioned mating ideas. So yeah, rook d7 uh, looks scary, definitely, um, but it is just a check black sort of waddles away. So yeah, rook d7, not quite correct. Any other ideas? Uh, I will point out that my idea is directly related to this king sitting here on e7. Uh, Clash Kid suggesting knight g5. Uh, this feels looking at this. positionally incorrect. Because oh, yeah. you're, so you're trading a strong knight for like this awful, awful knight here. So I'm going to take this. Yeah, that's exactly why I dismissed it. But it's the kind of tactic you see when this rook was attacked and you're disrupting the connection. Yes, if this so rook were under fire, that would definitely be Scary. I think black would be forced to play rook takes g5. Uh, maybe the idea here is to attack the rook somehow. Say yeah. queen e4. Um, oh, it's not white's move. Well, okay, this just doesn't work. Um, if you if you attack the rook, I always have b2, actually, is the problem. So this is just a, pos a huge positional concession. Is f5 anything? Uh, probably not. If I had to guess, first of all, I'm going to take this. Hmm. I hope I haven't ruined your day at all. Sure. And I'll, I don't know, do anything I want. Um, 
I'll play knight f6. Mm, yeah, okay. Just getting my getting my pieces in the game. Ah, so Rozo has actually hit on the idea I had. Uh, I saw this king on e7, and I was like, man, I want to give a queen check. But I can't play queen c5. So I my idea was I want to give a queen check on a3, which is the idea that Rozo had. Um, so I looked at this move... Bishop c4, which I think is incredibly strong. And my first point is, if you allow me to play queen a3 check, I think you are going to have a big time problem. So what, what, well, so say, okay, so you play nothing, right? King d8. And notice that um, my queen is still guarding this square. So... I think I can just give you some big time issues here. Ah, oh God, I'm not quite remembering my variations. Let me see if I can remember my variations. Oh. So knight d6 allows black to trade the queens. Although you are going to win this pawn at the end, right? So knight d6, check, and check. Actually, are you winning multiple pawns? No, you're not, right? Yeah, you just win the one. I think so. Um, so knight d6 probably isn't the best move. God, I, I'm not remembering what I came up with here, which is a little bit sad. So... Can we do, like... Yeah, yeah, sure. Tell me. Uh... Rook takes bishop take queen here. The oh, I lost my rook. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Yeah, you you, you <laughs> don't. I didn't have the file. Uh, you also um, <laughs> okay. Black has rook g one check possibilities. I think. Yeah. Which is interesting. Um, but the the point behind bishop c four is not only do I have this queen a3 check, the thing that you have to keep floating around in your head, I actually had another really, really sneaky idea. My other really, really sneaky idea was, uh, so say, again, if you give a nothing, I'm going to come rook hunting. And I'd like to ask you where this rook is going. Take the oh, if I take the pawn, I lose it. Mm-hmm. That's my point. So White is actually fishing an exchange here. No, but... Now you don't have any of the pressure. So I can play... Yeah, maybe not. Queen d3, yeah, exactly. Or like, I don't know, knight d6. And, and really any move, because you give up the pressure on the g-file. Well, so queen, yeah, d, queen, d, queen d3 wins the rook, actually. Right? Because, the rook, again, the rook has nowhere to go. <laughs> so I think I think bishop f1, uh, black actually has to give this exchange. I don't see another choice. And if we like, just come back, you're just going to chase it. Yes. Uh, bishop... We come back here. h5. Okay. Oh, it's not a great rook now, but. But again, because you give up, you gave up pressure on the G file, I just do like D file things to you. As soon as the rook goes off the G file, you don't have any pressure, and you don't have any like mating ideas or whatever. So I just go and mate you. Mm. Irritating. Yeah. Right. It's, it is a little irritating. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Yeah, isn't that the worst? So, Cl Clash Kid, we're just showing the threat, but um, if Bla my my question is like, what what move can Black make to save his rook? Like, how can he play that doesn't just get run over here? 
Like, I don't see a move that doesn't lose your rook, <laughs> quite frankly. Maybe we can move the king. Mm. Then you do have the check. Why am I giving the check? Why don't I go bishop f1? And, oh, because you have rook b2. Yeah. Does that work? You don't have a problem there? Okay, king d8. Rook g1. Rook g1. We, we might as well be lost here, but still. Uh, queen e4? <laughs> what are you doing with this knight? Yeah, point made. I was I was actually looking at something like this, but maybe you can drop back here. Yeah, I was. I, like this I actually wanted uh, this. I, I also had this queen a3 idea right away instead of giving the check. So like if king, uh, where are we? King e8. I sort of wanted to go here and like here and sort of threaten the check. But yeah, I don't know. I like this rook g1 stuff actually. I think get, taking the g file is so problematic for. Yeah, let, let's go. Uh, but so if I go rook g1, I can't go queen a3 anymore. So I like the other move order that we did better. What was it? It was knight d6, yeah. Yeah, this just looks awful. <laughs> and I think I think queen e4 wins a piece. Anyway, yeah, let's go back. Um, so bishop c4, I think, was an opportunity here to start getting chasing rooks, giving checks, all that fun stuff. Um, instead, queen d3 was played. Uh, but queen d3 has a slight problem, although it does look like I'm coming in on the file. Um, I give up control of g1. So all of a sudden, black gets to come in and make a mess. Of my position. Check. Queen h2. King c3 played. The problem is if you go king c1, I get to take on f4 with check. Yeah, and it's an important thing to be mindful of when you're giving this sort of check that you're not just going to chase the king to safety. So doing something. Well, the, the problem here is nice. e5 actually yeah. falls. Um, so but that's what I mean. You have to be you have to be mindful of this kind of thing. You so, be able to do something while you're checking them. You're not just checking them for the sake of it. Totally agree. So king comes up to c3. Um, and here, again, don't I don't like what uh, black is doing. King f8. I don't see why we're required to make a king move here. Yeah, definitely no safer. Like, can't, um, can't I take a pawn? Say, like, like if I take this, are you? am I getting mated? Well, I mean, this is quite scary. Why? Check. What's your threat? Uh, what's my threat? Knight f6. What's your threat? Hmm. Uh, Flanner, we will be doing your game third. So you're welcome to watch the uh, Grand Chess Tour instead, although we'll be very hurt. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see anything. Yeah, I think, this, that point. I think this is totally fine. So I think we can take f4. I don't see any reason. This is the point in the game where you have to calculate everything. Although, to Black's credence, he has a minute 49 on the clock at this point. Um, so when you get in big time pressure, that's right when you start going like, okay, just get get the king safe, right? Um, but unfortunately, this is not a position where you can just be like, just make a move. You have to calculate, and he doesn't really have the time to fully calculate this. So king f8, queen f3, very interesting idea. I believe the idea is to go rook h1 and cause you some problems, um, which is going to be a big problem. I... My first instinct was to play this, uh, and I'm trying to expose this unprotected piece. Mm -hmm. 
And I guess you take here. But now this is really winning something. I don't think you can guard this. I already want to do something like this. Seems really dumb. Um, I Okay, I take it. Uh, ooh. I wanted to give checkmate, but it's not checkmate yeah. anymore. No, it's a shame, isn't it? So, but I, I still don't think this is good. Yeah, I mean, I, I just move my queen to... Oh, I don't know. I don't want to give you queen h3 check, is one thing. Because then I really will have to calculate something. <laughs> okay, I mean, I, I move my queen. I'm up... I'm up, no, I'm down, <laughs> I can't count. <laughs> um, I'm down two pawns, but your king is still in safe, question mark. Say I go queen g2. I'm just trying to deny every check. I'm going to go rook h1 next. Or g6, maybe. Rook f1 and g6. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. It's, it's, it's a complicated position. Yeah, no, there's um, something there's something going on here. I'll give you credit. You've made a mess. So let me go back. Queen takes h4, queen f3. You went knight g5. Is there some way for me to not allow this stupidity that I've allowed? <laughs> I take offense at that. Um... I can go like queen g2 maybe. Ah, oh, I'm hanging at 4. What am I talking about? This is ridiculous. Yeah, this is... Okay, you found a way to make a mess, actually. It's kind of annoying. Queen takes f4. Oh, do you want rook f1? No, rook f1 doesn't work. What fork is being done? Queen oh, takes f4. f4. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said you're hanging a fork. I was like, where? No, no. Okay, anyway, uh, queen f3 is, is definitely a, a good move, uh, trying to pincer the queen. And here, black, I actually like black's move. Black said, I'm done with this. I'm done with getting attacked. I'm done with my queen being my only developed piece. And he, he gives some back to destroy the center. And I think this is a really good practical decision. Um... Also, I'm not sure how else you really avoid your queen just being lost. Yeah. I guess you can you can play this, but then you're losing the piece on h7. So, knight takes e5. Really good move. Destroying the center, freeing the queen. Nice find. Check. And SP, are you ready, ready for round three? Sure. King e7. <laughs> Why are we playing these moves? It doesn't make our king safe. Yeah, there's got to be something better we could do with our time. Like, I don't even see a threat. Develop at the moment. I think okay. I think he wants to play bishop d7. Like, get the piece out. Oops, I've spoiled White's move. Um, <laughs> but like, man, there's got there's got to be a better way to do this. Maybe I go b6. This is not a good sure. move. No, this uh, is a terrible move. We... <laughs> Hanging the world. Uh, well, it's... <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but the... the, the... <laughs> B6 has not accomplished what I wanted it to accomplish. So B6, not a good move. Oh, oh, let's move our F pawn. Actually, actually, no. I think this is a good move. This is a good move. I'm almost yeah. positive. And the reason is I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a piece that exists in the game. Yeah, right? Maybe we still go for this. Yeah, but now, now my, my piece exists. Praise the Lord. I'm going to run this pawn now. <laughs> Are you? I am. I'm going to play 94. Hmm. What's your threat? 
my threat is to take your knight on d6, which is hanging. Okay. And I'm going to trade the queens. Do I even lose here? I don't know if you lose, but I'm not trying to win as black. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. trying to desperately get my position in order. My position might not be in order, by the way, because you have rook d8 at the end of that. So that might not work. This whole thing. Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, rook somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, h5, right? No, uh, oh, okay, yeah, that's it. I was gonna take the rook first, and then you can't stop me cleaning. But yes, this works. So, okay, my solution isn't correct, but I think f5 actually is correct because you're 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 suddenly gaining a place for your piece Something. to live. <laughs> and now. Maybe I can just go bishop d7? Do I lose something here? I really want to say yes, but I don't see it. Well, so you can take b7. We dropped the pawn, but that's... Uh, but I, I don't know if that matters so much. Mm, yeah, it might just... Kind of... Like, I, I, I got my goal. I, I got my pieces out, finally. Yeah, I definitely think f5 is a good move. It just feels like like I have to get a piece out. I can't get this piece out, so let's try and get this knight back in the game. Uh, anyway, after king e7, the position is just busted. Queen d3. Mate threat. I can't play bishop d7, so it points out that king e7 has been a totally wasted move. And from here, the white player plays very strong. Queen c7. Queen c3. Excellent move. Targeting some... Weak dark squares, targeting this weak dark square. Um, very, very strong move. Queen c3. Bishop d7. Check. King e8 is just a total brain fart. King e8 walks into knight d6. King e8, you have, you have to go king d8 here. Um, but the position is pretty lost no matter what. Knight d6. Knight f7. Knight d6. Rook f1. Nice move from white. Trying to bring another uh, piece into the attack. So white is playing excellent chess here. B6, queen e5, just keeping connection with the knight. A5, rook f7, the rook enters with a dazzling effect. King a7, and here the white player says, I do not want your knight. I would like a queen, please. And in this position, black resigned. I have one point. Yes. To make. This rook hasn't moved for the entire game. <laughs> you know what? This knight has not moved off h7 since it went there. Yeah. I feel like that sums up the entire game. Like this this rook totally. has not moved. Totally agree. These these two pieces that we we put well, this we put in the corner and this started in the corner never moved. That's not how you play chess. So, takeaways from this game, SP. Uh, remember your theory. Uh, <laughs> at least play so at least play something that makes sense. Yeah, don't don't remember your theory. Um, Think about what you're playing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the smarter way to do it. Um, also, I think remembering ideas in openings as well. So, like the d5 break is super thematic. Yeah, and for um, for black, so the the b5 uh, counter punch is very thematic as well. Yes. Um, and also e5. Yes. So lots of themes. So knowing knowing like the themes of the opening can be very useful. Um, what are the themes? Um, Don't be greedy. Break, control the center. Don't be greedy. Yeah, definitely. Um, like play e5, right? Yeah, I mean, we saw what happened. You just get squeezed and... There's no point to having pieces or being a piece up if you can't use it. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I mean, don't make superfluous king moves that don't actually... Don't make moves that don't achieve anything. I feel like we're being a bit harsh to black here, but... it, it Look, he had a very difficult-to-play position. Yeah. And, like, if you have this position, you have five minutes on your clock. That's very difficult. But, like, thinking about your principles of being like, I just have to get these pieces out somehow um 
So, you know, knight b6 is extremely logical. If it doesn't lose something, it's something that I'm going to play. Oh, yeah. actually, I'm, I, I'm realizing a slight issue with knight b6. <laughs> let's, let's leave it for now. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. There's, just, there's queen c5, I, but okay. Yeah, I think, actually, we missed something, a key theme in the beginning as well. Like, even when you are up a piece, it doesn't, the position does not necessarily just win. Um, you have to use your pieces, right? Yeah, so like right in the opening, just developing like and how you're going to develop is going to be super critical. Totally, totally. Um, I think really that's like the number one takeaway from the game. Yeah, I think this was a really nice find. Yeah, um, totally, especially on low time. Some... But yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, White played really well, other than misremembering <laughs> <laughs> and not thinking about their move. But um, yeah, good game. Good game to both players. Let's move on to our board two game. This is going to be between Outer Heaven 92 and Rozo 97. This game was a mess. This game, both players ate their tactical Wheaties before this game. Man, this was really something. So let's let's dive right in. Um, we have a... Oh, arrows go away. Where are my arrows showing up? Oh, because I have the engine on. Don't want that on. Um... G6, knight C3, we have a King's Indian. Uh, I'm pretty sure Rozo plays a lot of King's Indian from the black side. I know him and um, K. Farapont used to do this a ton from the black side. You remember K. Farapont? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they both used to play this a ton. Um, and here White played the move H3. Now, I know this is theory, but I can't stomach <laughs> playing the move h3 in this position. Like, this is a theoretical move, so I can't be too harsh on this move, but man, this is like, this goes against how what I know about how to play chess. So, I can't be harsh on this, it's a real move, but don't don't play h3 here, like, play, play a developing move. <laughs> I don't know, would you, would you consider h3 in this position? I mean, no, I play f3, but yeah. um, <laughs> no, I I know it's to stop the bishop coming out, it's to stop the knight coming out. It, you usually play it later, though, I thought. It is a move here. It's oh, you... it's totally yeah. fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, just not to my taste, but again, not a bad move. Just it goes against what, what, I, what I was taught about how to play chess. Um, bishop g5, okay, this is a way to play h6, bishop goes back to e3. Note that um, the bishop doesn't really want to be on h4. It's not really accomplishing much here. Um, and can actually, especially with h3, well, h3 is interesting because it, it now has this h2 square, but it just doesn't really do much on this square. Um, so going back to e3 is a little bit more sensible. And white is just making the argument, okay, you, you got h6, but that's not actually a move you really wanted to play. You're you're weakening this h6 point. Um, e5, okay, d5. Knight a6. Uh, I would consider... No, you're okay, right? Um, I was going to say consider playing the move a5 first, but the problem, or, or the reason this works for black, is knight c5 is going to come with a tempo. So white is not going to have time to go b4. If only we'd played f3 instead of h3. <laughs> well, I think a lot of things would be different if we played f3. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, bishop d3. We have to prepare to guard this pawn. Knight d7. I don't see why we're not playing knight c5 right away. But okay, I don't think knight d7 is a bad move. We're preparing f5, and then we're just going to bring this knight back to f6, I guess. Yeah, this, this should be fine. Um, and here, white sort of points out the point of everything he's been doing. He goes g4. So lending a little bit more credence to this h3 move. So what white is, is doing here is he's saying, okay, I'm, I'm weakening my kingside structure, but you're not achieving your, your main break. So I'm, I'm really limiting your counterplay here on the king side that you normally get. Uh, so it, it's really interesting, because when I see this move g4, it makes me want to play f5 more. 
because when if I do achieve f5, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> um, but it, it is difficult to achieve right this moment. So let's see, knight a c5, yes, seems logical. Bishop c2, a5, very necessary. This is thematic in the King's Indian. If we put our knight on c5 just to be kicked out by b4, we would be a sad man. So we play a5 to secure this square for our knight. Knight e2. Knight e2, why aren't we going knight f3 here? Mm -hmm. Maybe we want to play f4? Do we really want to play f4? I don't think so. <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm not sure why. I would, well, really, I would go queen d2 and win a tempo, first of all. Maybe I want a long castle and go f4. Yeah. Maybe that's why we're going knight e2, is to go, it's a long castle and go f4. That makes some sense to me, actually. Okay, knight e2, I, 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 I see, what, I see the plan. Play, yeah, once you play g4, it's not out of the world, out of this world to play long castles and pawnstorm. Yeah, no, th this makes some sense. Knight b6, I like this move. Um, I like this move a lot, actually. Uh, the point is, it's very uncomfortable to defend your c4 pawn. In fact, you have to play b3. But b3 is a big concession from the white player. Not that, not that he made a mistake, but he has to play this move. But uh, it's not a move that white wants to play, because white is severely weakening his queen side with this move b3. So now this idea of like long castling becomes incredibly scary. Black's going to go a4 at some point. Um, and it's going to be very unpleasant for, for white once the A file opens if his king is over here on C1. So I like this move knight B6 a lot. It's really uh, forcing white to make a concession on the queen side here. Queen H4. Interesting. You are threatening bishop G4. Oh. This is going to be messy. I wonder if... Yeah, I've actually just seen the move. I was going to suggest knight g3 as well. Yeah, I think... I feel like that. You, you sort of have knight to, right? Six. If you're not playing knight g3, you're playing... You have to move the knight, because you need to defend this pawn. You could play, like, <laughs> king d2. It is a legal move. You are correct. I, like, I can see both sides of the board collapsing. I don't mind king d2 so much. I mind king d2. <laughs> I'll do enough minding for the both of us. How about that? Okay. King d2, like, it when your king steps into such a place, it makes me want to do this. I think you're in huge trouble here. Am I? I don't know, but I think you are. If I do this? Legal. Uh... Legal. I feel quite solid. If... I would not, this is not what I would describe as solid. Let me take this. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I see some issues. Right? There's gonna be some problems here. Or... Yeah, even like just this. Uh, actually, I had, a, I had another idea. Um, how about this? Really? Yeah. Chuk. My friend. You cannot be serious. Why not? Because your king is on d3. Eh, uh, worse things have happened. Uh, have they? I don't think they have. Uh, I don't know. My king goes anywhere. Thank you. 
Well, now I feel perfectly safe. Yes? How perfectly safe do you feel? Perfectly safe. <laughs> Okay, I'm not playing. I'm not playing this well. Oh, oh no! I, I can take F three. I'm playing this well. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You lose. How about that? Do we agree? Fine, fine, fine. Look, you you can't play King D two. It's ridiculous. Play Knight G three. Be a normal boy. <laughs> A four makes sense. Black is continuing his plan on the king side. Um, Rook B one. Yes, you have to guard, or you have to step out of, well, hold on, do you have to step out of anything? Not really. You do! I have a threat! What's my threat, SP? <laughs> Just kidding, I don't have a threat. Uh, I, I lied to you, I lied to you, I don't have a threat. Wait, 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 you might have a threat. I might have a threat. Uh, so, I, I have no nothing moves. <laughs> I don't know what my threat is. Um, so I was thinking, take, 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 takes, and then we do have this. No, we don't, because the knight guards the rook. That's what I thought. Oh. <laughs> That's what I thought as well, but then I realized it doesn't work. Um, okay. Uh, maybe you don't have a threat. You must have a threat. Well, must is a strong word. I think you have a threat. Maybe your threat is to do something like we talked about, where like you go take, 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 and f5, and claim the pieces are sort of scattered. Yeah, I mean, Black's King is definitely safer, as we have just demonstrated. Yeah, so I think, I think Rook b1 is sensible. And here Black played f5. Now, this is interesting. Because um, I have this square defended enough. So um, I, I see the game continuation, and it's clear that Black had this idea laid out ahead of time. So let's see how this went. Takes, takes, takes. And here, of course, you cannot take because you end up losing a piece on f5 here. This is defended. So the Black idea was in this position to play e4. And you're attacking an unprotected knight. And here, white went knight c e2. So clearly, white is seeing some threat. But I'm going to ask the the sort of the dumb question because I'm a dumb man. Why am I not taking this? What is what is white seeing that makes me not want to take this? Hmm. If we take here... Yeah, I take back. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. So I, I think... So I, I can see something interesting here. So if I take this with a knight, this actually looks like black gets his pawn back, or gets a pawn back. Um, and black, I think, has pretty decent compensation here. Um, yeah, there's threat. Yeah, there's uh, there's there's threats. There's very active pieces. Like really, almost all of black's pieces, except for this knight, are very active. So I think black has pretty good compensation for the pawn here. Um, however, what I did there was not forced. After knight takes e4, I can take back with the bishop. And I think. Black is really not getting the activity he desired here because he still can't recapture on f5, which means that this piece remains pretty passive compared to where it was a strong piece on f5. I don't know, do you, do you see any ideas here for Black? Because I'm struggling. Like, okay, Black can give a check, sure, but I just sort of yeah. step away. I don't see a big problem here, I'll be honest. Yeah, like you get you get rook a two, sure, but even even here you don't seem to have a threat. Rook e eight and rook takes e three. 
Let's There's go a comment from Yago. back. So so here I assume this is after bishop takes e4. So rook e8. Well, oh, yeah, that's nice. Well, first things first. I, yeah, I don't have to move this bishop, right? Say I play like queen f3. Yeah. And actually, I like queen f3 because I maybe start to hint at like f6 ideas and bothering actually, you that way. Do we want to play queen g4 instead? Uh, maybe. I think I have to decline this queen trade. Go something like queen f6 or queen e7. Um, but this does look very convincing. If I if yeah, my I best move is queen e7. Like this, we've got this. Ooh. And Although the, ooh, that looks. We've got this. Agreed. There's a check. There's a check, but. No, but this is so strong. This is absolutely yeah. crushing. Yeah, no, this is... Queen g4 It looks very convincing. Nice find. So, yeah, I think this idea doesn't work. Um, which is interesting. Let's see, how much time was spent here? Okay, well, no, no time was spent on e4, but that's because you have to see the e4 idea before playing f5. We spent about five minutes on f5. Okay, so we definitely thought this through, but it looks like it doesn't quite work. How much time spent on knight c2? We spent seven minutes on this move? Seven minutes. So he, he definitely thought about it. I don't know. I, I think white missed something here. Maybe he, like, I know what, I actually do this sometimes. I sort of, like, auto-recapture with the knight before the bishop. Do you do that at all? Yeah, because bishops are worth more, right? <laughs> exactly, right? So I, I'm always like, okay, I'll, I'll throw the knight first, and then the bishop will take later. Um, but, of course, this is not, like, a sensible way to analyze chess. So I feel like that might be what's happening here, because knight takes e4 is, is no good, but, but bishop takes e4 looks like... Kind of cruising here for white. Rosa saying they both miss bishop takes. Yeah, I think I think that's what what happened here. So knight c two played, um, but this really like now black sort of justifies what he's done here, because um, he has a, a nice pawn here in the center. Um, he has a really nice bishop here. He's going to probably retake here on f five at some point. So all of a sudden, I think black's position makes quite a lot of sense. A B three A B three Rook A two okay, jumping in to to put some pressure down here. Knight F four. I kind of want to hold on to this pawn if I can. This feels like an important pawn. Can I go Knight D four? If we really want to win it back, we could play like. Bishop take. Yeah, but you, you, you know how this story ends. Yeah. <laughs> SP, you know how this story ends. Yeah. This story doesn't end the way you want it to. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's still defending the F2 pawn. Mm. That, that looks like I'm sad. Yeah, I mean, there's interesting ideas. I don't want to take that. Why am I taking that? You don't want to take that. You just want to give it... Okay. Um, I want to play something... Oh, sh no. So I wanted. I want to win this back, but queen e2 actually doesn't do what I want. Because queen e2, I've, I've walked into a pin on this bishop. <laughs> okay, so oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. And you want to trade queens? I think about it. I, I, I don't really, but I also don't really see it better move. Also, I can't trade queens. Oh, maybe I can. Yeah, because you hit the rook as well, right? Yeah. This is really interesting. So, rook... I don't know. F7? Where does my rook go? Yeah. That seems wrong. That seems... Oh, rook f7 seems very wrong, though. <laughs> Just to point this out, rook f7 is an, is an oopsie. With a, with a hello coming right there. So, rook g5... I don't know, say I just go rook c1... 
Yeah. This is weird. This is messy. So, oops. Um, maybe knight d4. Maybe the, wow. I I really didn't give us any credit, but maybe there's something here. There are ideas like taking a c2 and knight check. You need to look at knight check on d3. Yeah, yeah. So I was looking at this before actually with the reverse move order, with knight check, bishop takes, and then having something on f2. Yeah, I I remember yeah. I watched this game uh, the, live. The bishop, the bishop really holds everything together. Yeah. So okay, knight f4, maybe just a good move. Maybe holding onto the pawn isn't really feasible. Uh, check. King f1 takes. Knight takes f5. We have to. I think we have to really think about peace exchanges here. I guess if you don't take f5, it's like sort of hard to make a move. Like, <laughs> what what move do you make here? Mm. Can I do something stu little stupid? This is a little stupid. Almost certainly. Little stupid. Yeah, it's a threat. Um. So okay, I'm, I guess I just move. Well, I'm hanging h3, is why I was saying this might be a little stupid. Um, my, yeah, but I'm not taking that. Well, but you take it with check both times. Uh, uh, okay. So my, my idea was to do this and just sort of tuck the king into g1. And say, like, I sacked a pawn for, like, permanent king safety. And your king has much less permanent king safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's reasonable. I don't know, it's interesting. I don't know if it's good. I think black can just put his king... Oh, I don't know, on h8, I guess? Because I'm worried about this. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good move. I missed that. Where does black put his king? You're killing me! <laughs> That's not how chess works! We've been over this! I wouldn't want to be black here. Uh, I don't know, there's threats going both ways. I, I think my king is safe. I think I'm happy. Really? Yes. Okay. I guess there's... Yeah, I'm. I was playing stupid moves, but well. So if you play, if you play king h8, I would start by going king g1, so that after knight takes, there's no like queen h1, and then I'll like take this next move or something. Mm. Anyway, it's it's interesting. It's it's a way to play. Okay. Um, knight takes f5 also seems logical. You're you're removing the threat. I, I worry about this king, but let's see. So knight takes f5, rook takes f5, knight g6. Okay, there's nothing happening on f2, so you have to move your queen. Queen f6 looks extremely logical, and then the point behind knight g6 is after queen f6 to go rook g1. I think you can probably do it in the other yeah. order as well. It should be fine either way. This king is a little bit short on squares. Well, he goes to f7, because you're right, he doesn't have a lot of choices. <laughs> If you go to h7, does some great disaster befall you? On h7, you just claim that there's some problem here, right? Hmm. How much of a problem is that? And you can't take this, right, because of f2? There probably is some problem here. I don't immediately see it, though. Hmm. Maybe, like, queen g4? Yeah, but then I think we just... we take here. Uh, yeah, but there's no mate, is there? Uh, you might be right. Damn. And I don't have I don't have time for bishop takes. And then we get mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, interesting. Maybe king h seven was possible, but king f seven totally looks fine. Rook g two. Yes, I agree. 
rook f3. So the threat is rook takes e3. White plays bishop takes c5, which looks like suicide to me. Because the whole position is centered around f2. <laughs> and we're giving up our dark square bishop. So king g1, right? Dodge the threat? Sure. I don't know, can black take this? I feel like the answer has to be absolutely not. The answer must be absolutely not. Yeah, then I start to worry. Yeah, this is this is too much. Where does this rook go? It goes back to f3, right? Sure. No, but, then no, but no. Some sort of... This. Uh, yeah. Um, this? <laughs> Why does this ever work? I take? I don't see a problem. Oh. I, I was maybe hallucinating where the king was. Oh, I leaned in too deep into my webcam. Oh, you thought I was still on F1? Um, yeah, I played my brilliant move, King G1. Yeah, no, you're lost here, right? You're 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 just the black king is in shambles. Notice how these knights are struggling to, to join in the action. I think that's part of black's problem in this position. Is that the, the knights are really not doing very much. Okay, but Bishop I think I think King G1 is a good move. You shouldn't play rook takes h3, you should I don't know, bring a knight, right? Knight Does knight d yeah, knight no it activates. It doesn't work though. It you just pawn, but it activates it doesn't rook. it doesn't really activate though does it activate i would play like this probably let's activate this knight to e5 yeah that seems more sensible yeah this just seems like i can recapture here with a with yeah a... we can put both knights on d3 that looks good to create a super knight <laughs> okay, but white played bishop takes c5, and I think this is just total disaster. D takes queen e2. Okay, we're holding on by a thread here. Bishop d4. And here, I remember watching this live, and I was just like, oh, white is like totally busted. There's absolutely nothing for white to play for here. And then white played a move, and I went, hmm... How busted is white? So here's where white really started pulling out all the stops. Knight h8 check. This is a really nice find from white. Um, and the point is simply, here black took, which I'm actually not convinced is the best move. Um, because after taking, you're removing threat from f2. So white is sacrificing his knight simply to buy some time for the attack, or uh, to, to sort of alleviate the pressure on f2. And after queen takes h8, white goes queen takes e4, and all of a sudden, black doesn't have really a mating attack, and white starts to have a mating attack. Um, so let's go back to knight h8, and let's see if I can not take this to keep pressure up. So Yeah, the trouble is this file is kind of off limits. Well, how off limits? I go there. Show me show me the off limits. And I move. Um can I check? Ooh. Is this mate? Um This looks like mate. Uh, uh I don't see the mate. I see the mate, I see the mate, I, I saw it. Um Although, well, no, so rip. Well, hmm. Oh, it's not quite me. Uh... It's messy! <laughs> because I, I take it! And then this? <laughs> and I take that! And I move, and what's material? Ah, you win my rook. Uh, oh. Yeah, I could do that. Okay. That was... probably didn't play this accurately anyway. Yeah, I agree. Let's There's a go... lot going on here. Let's go back. So, hold on. Part of the... Both players are under 
Yeah. Well, one's under seven minutes and one's under three minutes. So part of the problem there was I allowed rook g8 check. So let's not allow rook g8 check this time. So I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to go to d7. Okay. Let me, let me think about this. <laughs> this is why I, I love this move because there's just so much activity. King d6. Show me the oh, money. Man. Show me your moves. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. You, know, you can play queen g6, and I don't know if you're losing it there. Oh, you are. You're losing. I, think I lose. Because of just rook c2, actually. Oh, mm, hmm. I'm prepared to believe that I lose there. No, no, no. Hold on. What do you play? Can we take here? Mm, no. Mm. Yes, you can. You take the queen. Yeah. And, oh, what's material? Well, if knight... Oh, knight takes bishop f2, and then you can't take that back. Okay, well, that works. Okay. I thought you couldn't do this. Why did... Oh, wait, 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 go back, go back. Rook f2, rook f2. My idea was to just move somewhere. This was my idea. <laughs> oh, this... This can't be. Oh my god. Uh... Oh, because you go rook g2? Yeah, rook g2 wins. Okay, okay. Okay, I can't do this. Um, king d6, queen g6. Okay, we, we keep playing chess, right? Sure, if that's what we've been doing so far. Yeah, right? I don't know. Um, okay, what, what about if I go king f8? I think that's easier. Okay, so here I have a draw, right? If I want. Yeah. Can I waddle? Does it does this make any difference? Ah, this does make a difference. King d8. Where's your rook g8 now? <laughs> yeah. Um... I win. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty forced, right? King f8? Like, what else do you play? I don't see what else you're playing here. I, like, I don't- I literally don't see another reasonable move. No. No. First of all, what's your check? What's your upcoming check? Oh, that's good, yeah. too. I was just going to take on g2. Okay. No, I think this wins. Now... I'm prepared to believe that. Just to... to For some context. Your opponent... You have 2 minutes 30 seconds on your clock. Your opponent plays knight h8. I do not fault black at all for just being like, I'm taking it. Like, how... How are you supposed to see this in two minutes? You're, you have to calculate all these variations in two minutes without being able to make the moves on the boards. I, I would never be able to do that. I can't possibly fall black for missing this. So yeah, it's tough. So queen takes h8, but all of a sudden, the turns have tabled, as they say. They do say that. Um, and yeah, there's some weak light squares occurring over here. Um, why? What happens on queen f6? Can we get? You get the check on h7. Yeah. Ah, and there's gonna be rook g8. Yeah. So I can't play that. Can I guard these squares like this? This feel. This is a feels bad though. No, because then I then I go here and I'm threatening here. Now. Ooh. And then you go here. <laughs> That's a. I'm sorry. Did I did I flip it back on accident? Yeah, 
Yeah, this looks kind of unplayable for black. SPU live? I'm here, I'm here. Okay. I'm thinking. I thought you might have lagged out for a second. No, but there, there just has to be some horrible way to break this down. Like, I'm looking at things like D6. What? No. No. Oh, I don't know. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just riffing, man. <laughs> no, no, but just go D6, right? Add some fuel. Uh, D6. Can I just take that? What are you taking oh, it with? The check. Yeah. Or this one. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you... this, this must just win. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so... Yeah, I can. Yeah, this... I think after queen takes E4, you're lost. Black tried rook takes C2. Which is interesting. He's removing the battery, but he is starting to allow this check. Or, as played in the game, hey, there's a rook hanging yeah. with check. That's painful. Well, I think I think he knew the rook was hanging. I don't think he missed it. Mm, maybe, maybe not. I think I feel like he expected the recapture here. I I think that's the least likely thing to occur in this position. <laughs> I think. I would expect, if I miss something, it's because I would be expecting this check on g6. Or e6. I guess. I would be, no, I would be expecting the check on e6, actually, is what I'd be expecting. But yeah, I mean, maybe you missed this, I don't know. But I feel like That's he did. Losing in a way. I feel like, I feel like, you know, <laughs> something's falling apart. Queen f6. Queen g3, excellent move. Black king flapping in the wind. We do not trade queens. We continue to put pressure. Uh, so good play from the white side. Knight d7. Yeah, I mean, what, what do you play, right? There's not much else to do. I guess I'm also threatening this check as well. Yeah. So knight d7, check. King e7. Check, knight e5, and a nice, this is really nice. Yeah, a nice finish to the game. I'll throw this to the chat. White to play and win. It's not an easy one. Yeah, I remember. I, I actually some time watching this live. <laughs> I I missed this in the live game. I remember that as well. Yeah, everyone's too spoilt by us uh, telling them the moves all the time. Yeah. Uh, they don't want to contribute. Too lazy. Yeah. I'm coming for you, chat. No. I'm calling you out. No, okay. This one is quite tough. Is it D6 check? I'll be honest. D6 check probably wins. Um, but it is not uh, what was played in the game. So uh, let's just quickly do that. D6 check. I'm going to take... I don't know with the pawn. And what was what's your idea behind this? Like, uh, what have we gained? Right, because if you're gonna play d6 and I take it, you have to have some idea about what's what's gonna happen after I take it. I'll point out you actually do have an idea. You have a very good idea here. So d6 is actually a very interesting move. I think this actually does win. But you have to see why. What was your point? Yes, correct. Exactly. Rook d7. Um, and you've occupied the d6 square for the king. Uh, but uh, IMC Jebs has also found the move that was played in the game, which is simple and straightforward and to the point, which is the move queen h7 check. A nice little bit of geometry. Loose pieces drop off. A good eye from the white player seeing this, uh, you know, you're, you're attacking the king, you're attacking the king, and all of a sudden you remember that there's a loose rook on c2. That's that's something that's easy to forget about when you're attacking the king. Um, 
and this was the last move, or sorry, king d6, queen takes c2 was the last move of the game. White has up two exchanges and a pawn. Black has no counterplay, and the black king is really getting mated here as well. Um, rook g6 is actually a threat. Yeah, so there was there was some really interesting geometry a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how what do you move here? We were discussing all kinds of things. I think we, like, we were looking... Look here. Oh yeah, I had something cooked up here. Well, we have this, and we, if we, we can't take that because this is pinned. Yes, that was good. Um, it's a long time ago. I can't remember. The, well, yes, I think the, the the main move we were looking at was this one. Or no, this just loses, right? Yeah, yeah this just loses. Mate. No, so that 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 wasn't it. Yeah, I think it was this bishop e five stuff, and then you know you get this check. I think we were looking at this. Oh yeah, this is familiar. And then there was something. I th oh maybe it was just rook g six. This is me? No, nearly. No, it's not me. Ne nearly, nearly. Oh uh, no, it's not me. I move. Yeah. I'm fine. Um, Every everything is fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. But yeah, I, I'm sure the, the white player had enough time. I'm sure he would have calculated a win, no matter Black's response. So, a nice game. Let's go back uh, through this. First things first, I don't love h3, but okay, it's fine. Um, everything made sense. a5, a nice thematic King's Indian idea. So, uh, Black player clearly knowing the ideas of the King's Indian. Nice to see. Um, knight b6, forcing a weakening of the queen side, very good. Okay, this is interesting. Yeah, lots of arrows, love love me some arrows. And then f5, this is a super critical moment where, this is actually a really interesting idea where the black player is trying to sacrifice a pawn to open up his, his pieces and, and uh, sort of get these really active bishops, but it just doesn't work. So whenever you have a lot of captures available, you need to consider all your captures. So after e4, okay, this knight is hanging, so we have to do something about the knight. It's very logical. The first move we're going to look at is the capture. Oops, sorry. Um, a takes b3, we take back. Knight takes e4, and I think both players failed to look at the bishop capture here, after which black's position just looks pretty bad. So I think both players failing to analyze all the forcing moves. Very, very important. Um, instead of that, and then the last key point I think is um, if you have a piece that is holding together the key point of your position, we don't give this piece away. This bishop cannot be given away when it's holding together like the foundation of our position. So I think bishop takes c5 is a huge positional mistake, after which black should win. But kudos to the white player finding a really nasty, complicated move uh, when both players are in time pressure and forcing what I think is a mistake from the black player, after which they get the mating attack. So a uh, really cool idea there uh, and nice play. Anything to add, SP? I just want to quickly check whether this is actually a good move, uh, engine check. Um, uh, the move knight h8? Yeah, so it pops up a little bit. It's like second, third choice. It's definitely still losing. But yeah, it's definitely the most complicated. So what is the engine's top move? Uh, rook e1. To stop... But it's um, still minus three. This is terrible, no? Uh, not that move, because there's now apparently... See, I'm just reading off the engine. I've turned into Maurice, Ash Maurice Ashley. Of um, course, ninety five. Yeah, which makes perfect. Saw that one coming. Oh this yes, Rook E three. Saw that one. Sense, doesn't it? Oh my god. So I'm going to turn the engine off now. But it's interesting. Yeah, it's it's definitely a good choice. I think I think it's the the best practical try in the position. Like, yeah, I mean, you play Rook E one. Like, who plays that? Yeah, white is just getting counterplay here, so this is really nice. And you're forcing if black wants to win. I believe king f8 is winning, but you have to find this like ridiculous notion that you triangulate the king so that there's no longer rook g8 check. Um, yeah, it just seems like a a good a good way for a good way for white to press advantage. Anything else? 
No. All okay. right, let, let's Sorry, dive into our board one game, which is between Flanur and Floki the Cat. And um, this game is really interesting. So this is a really, a really, really nice game from, from Flanur, um, where White sort of puts the, the pedal on, the gas pedal gets an advantage and then really um, demonstrates good technique in converting an advantage um, throughout the entire game. So... Um, this is a pretty slow game, a pretty positional game, but um, nice showcases good technique because you know the, the books always say you know you have your plus equals position, the rest is technique, and then we all have terrible technique and lose these positions. Um, so I think this is a really good example of how to win positions like that. Um, also, it is a pretty decent sized rating difference between the two players, which can occur on board one and board eight is when we see the large rating differences. So I don't mean to be harsh on the black player. Um, he was a little bit outmatched in this game, um, but he ran into some trouble in the opening, actually. So we'll take a look at that. Knight d2. And here, black plays d takes e4. I don't like this move. I don't know. Do you play any, do you play any French for either side, SP? I've occasionally played it as white, and I do play the Tarash. So, okay, so um, this is, I believe, it's the Rubenstein, right? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure this is called the Rubenstein. I don't play it. I play the French, but I don't play this. Um, and it just seems to give white everything they want. Whites get, white gets a lot of, you know, presence in the center, um, whereas black seems to not really have so much presence in the center, so it seems like not a good try. The two main tries for black here are to go knight f6 and play the closed rush, or to play c5, immediately contest the center. Both of these are fine. This is also fine, but... It just seems like white is not, or sorry, white is getting a very good position. Okay, knight d7. The idea behind knight d7 is you want to play knight f6, but you don't want to play knight f6 right away because this queen actually can end up in some trouble with like bishop d3, bishop g5 stuff. So um, instead, knight d7 gets played, knight f3. And here I think black actually commits a serious error. Black plays bishop e7, which, all in all, it's just too passive. Black is making lots and lots of passive moves. It's in the book, it's been played, but play knight f6 here, and then after bishop d3, play c5. Right? We have to fight for the center at some point. We can't dawdle around for the entire game putting our pieces on super passive squares. So this is the way you need to play this opening, I'm pretty sure. Bishop e7, yeah, it's just too passive. Bishop d3, knight f6, queen e2. And now white has, or sorry, black sort of has a problem. What would you play as black here, SP? Um... A good question. I can't, I would probably play b6 to develop my bishop, but I'm I'm sensing that there's going to be some horrible way of punishing it. B6, 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 b6. I am not sure you want to weaken those light squares. Can you do something like bishop a6? Uh, bishop a6. I wasn't totally playing. I was a little worried about this one. Oh, actually, bishop a6. We drop it. Oh yeah, that, that does drop the yeah, that's a good point. We'd have to trade, and then we're giving black what they want. No, but I think you start to have some issues with your king side. Right? I'm getting developed. I'm controlling the center. You're not castled. I know I'm not castled. I, oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, but can't I, like, pester you a little bit? Can't I hint hint at something here? I can just castle, right? It's legal. Wait. I don't think I want to take e6. That seems slightly premature. Yeah, I agree. That would be a that would be a something pretentious sacrifice. <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. Okay. Knight takes h7. Ooh, why? Here's a comment from the white player. 
I don't Can we do that? think that works. With queen e4? Oh, queen e4, yeah, that's nice. Three oh. takes, takes, queen e4. Oh, 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 hello. Uh, does this, does it, yeah. this queen gets out, right? Yeah, this queen gets out. Nice, nice fine, yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah, so my my point is that black black has landed a very passive position, um, and I really don't know how to play the blacks. I would play c five, probably. Yeah, I mean at least it's active. I I am already quite scared for black. Yeah, I I agree. I super agree. Yeah, this just. Uh, I think black has gotten a very passive position. Uh, black trades here, but uh, after trading here, he's kind of like almost busted, I would say. Um, I mean, the trade makes sense in that, like, now your knights aren't doubled. But So, uh, the, the trade does make sense, but he missed the trick of this position. Um, and there, there is a trick in this position. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> so... Rubenstein is the sort of thing you play if you're a GM and you're playing another GM and you're willing to memorize loads of stuff to make a draw. Uh, I super agree with that, Chess Dupas. I, I think as an amateur player or a club player, you have to be looking for active positions, and this is just absolutely not an active position. Um, so this looks okay for Black, because Black gets to go Knight F6, which, you know, it looks like he's sort of getting space and solving his problems, but this actually doesn't really work. So I'm going to throw this to the chat. Flinner, don't answer this. I know you know. White to play and uh, for advantage. Because if, if this knight of six moves works, then yeah, black actually has sort of solved his opening problems. He's going to play c5. Every, oh, okay, I just showed it on the screen. Uh, but chess doofus found it as well. Um, bishop b7 works. And it's a nice little shot. It wins a pawn uh, because after the bishop retakes, then queen b5 check. And just a comment from... Okay, is saying queen b5, but queen b5 immediately will not work because you've got c6. Right? Yes, because you can play bishop d7. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was I was worried about this for a second, but it doesn't work because you can guard your rook like this. Um, Flaneur saying he's um only scored sixty percent in blitz uh, from this position, which is interesting. Um, Black does get some compensation because it's sort of like Benko-ish, where. Black gets like open files on the queen side, which is we know what black plays for in the Benko Gambit, and black does get some compensation in the Benko Gambit. But I think white is white is better here. O only white can be, possibly be better here. Castles, castles, a five. That's interesting. What's the point behind a five? I guess the point is to go a four, a three. Or are we setting up some queen trap here with rook fb8? That, that is a queen trap. Ooh, that is a queen trap. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so a5 with the sneaky threats. White says, no, 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 no. No sneaky threats. Rook fb8. I have to say this is not my intuition. Um, my intuition says rook ab8. So I wonder why the F rook was chosen. I don't know, do you have any thoughts why why the F rook might be played here? I guess the A rook is still gonna support that support that pawn and will, the F rook is doing nothing. Well so play like one rook to the B file and one rook to the C file. Yeah, so that was my idea. I, I wanted to put this rook here and play C5. Because then yeah, bo both rooks are on like half open files. Yeah. I guess I just don't I don't totally see the value in this rook being here. I guess maybe you're arguing that white is going to play have to play b3 at some point, and then you can play a4 and open the a file. That makes some sense. Yeah, it kind of combines nicely with the bishop as well. Is that the pressure down the a file? Yeah. 
Okay, this is... I, I believe... I also feel like maybe like you play a4 here, right? Since you played a5. Can I play a3? Does that bother you at all? Right, like queen... I don't know, where's your queen go? Make, put, put your queen somewhere. D3. D3. And I'm playing this. Does that annoy you? Uh, I probably just ignore that. Do you? Oh, you, you know what? I think d3 might have been an unfortunate square. Is this so bad? My queen's defended. Yeah, but it's a, you're ruining the structure. Hmm. Ooh. Okay, queen d5. Hmm. No, you're really not taking on c5. Oh, now no, you're going to take, yeah. yeah. Um... Oh, wait, 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 what? <laughs> yeah, that, that works. <laughs> what am I doing? Um... Maybe after queen d3, we just sit and say that white can't really develop the bishop b2. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. I think that's part of part of the reason why he's leaving this rook here is so that he has a four ideas in case of b three. Um, that, that was a comment from Chesty. Yeah, no, I, I I I got you. I I saw it as well. So yeah, this is <laughs> this is an interesting way to play queen queen d three. I don't. I'm not sure queen d three is the best queen d three queen c four queen c four. No, but queen d three was played in the game. Oh 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 okay. Um. Yeah, and black played c5. I, I think queen d3 is actually a little bit of a mistake, right? Because now, after c5, you just can't take it because... Well, I mean, okay, you can take it, but this doesn't look like you really have much at all. You have to play d4 here, right? Or else bishop d4 um, comes. Or just kidding. <laughs> bishop d4 does not come. No siree. You could play this. But then... I mean, my rooks are. All yeah, yeah, no. That all of a sudden, b three, a four, right? The, this, this rook, I, like, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm feeling the rook. It makes more sense. Yeah, this, you know, black, black has a lot of black has that Benko stuff going on. So yeah, I think uh, c five, white played b three, which we talked about. C takes d four. Queen takes d four. Yes. Otherwise, e five is maybe annoying. Right, if, if we take this way, I think black goes e5. Uh, we might have tricks here, though. What's your trick? Ooh. Your trick doesn't work. Uh, actually, no, no, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You, you go uh, knight, no, you, I would go knight g6 there, but, you know, it's the same. No, because then the queen recapture. Oh! And you're very sad. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, I looked at that too. <laughs> C takes. Oh, I like Flinner's suggestion actually. Um, Sixteen Bishop B two would have been more refined. He said. I think this is true. I think this is a good move. Just developing his final piece and getting like you can't stop me from recapturing this next move. And this this piece is sort of problematic for White. I think. So I like this move. This is a good move. Um, yeah, Queen takes D four. How is how is this ending? We were up a pawn, right? Yeah, but I, I'm I'm arguing I'm a I'm a Benko Benko dude. Yeah, what's he doing there? Yeah. Oh, that's a fork. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, you have a problem with your knight on that's randomly on c6. Yeah, I was looking for tricks, but I got tricked. Um, okay. Silly SP tricks are for kids. I don't know. I feel like I have I'm gonna take that. Oh, <laughs> again. <laughs> okay, I go a4. Uh, I should probably play bishop b2. Connect my rooks. That's legal. I don't know. I think I think black has some compensation here. Right, all of Black's pieces are doing something. 
the the rooks are better than white rooks. I I I think black is. Uh, I wasn't a fan of this because you're weakening this point, right? Yeah, where are you going with the knight? I'll go back to f6. Mm. Okay, I might just mess up your structure. Please do. To quote Mr. Shankland, pawns do not move backwards. And to quote myself, what is this? <laughs> yeah. This is not what you want, my friend. See, this is why... Uh-oh, robot pretentious, we missed you. Am I back? Yes. Okay, I was saying this is why I don't play on board one. Because <laughs> you do things like take a4 and just destroy your entire queen side. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think it's interesting. I think I think Black could have chosen to play this way. Instead, he played Queen C six, which also makes sense. He's targeting a weakness. Um, queen D three. Yep. Rook D eight. I mean, Black still has pressure here. Black is still making tempo moves. Queen C three. Yeah. So if Rook C eight, you go C four. I guess. Hmm. And then yeah, and then still a four. It's it's lost some power though because you've moved your heavies off of this, right? Yeah, the bishop's still doing a doing a good job there. And like all of a sudden, I'll own the a file. Oh, I don't know. I develop my bishop. Also, don't I? I have knight e five at some point to be a little tempo tempo. A little tempo tempo. A little tempo tempo. You never had a tempo tempo before. <laughs> I don't know, I play bishop b3. Look, I think, again, I think black has some compensation. I think he has slightly less compensation than the other position here. Flinner yeah. is saying, this is why I only score 60% from this trap. Yeah, it's not It's not so easy. I thought you did a good job uh, playing the position, though. Like, everything you're doing makes sense. Queen c3, I think, also makes sense. It's preventing c4 and preparing rook c8. But white did a good job consolidating this. So bishop g5. Rook c8, rook c1, and now a little trick, bishop a3, so uh, white can actually save his material, because it looks like, oh, I'm going to have to move my rook, I'm going to lose this pawn, but he goes rook cd1, and the problem is, you, you can take this, but it's going to cost you something. So, what happened in the game takes, takes, queen takes c2, and uh, I'll throw this one to chat. What's the way for white to apply the most pressure in this ending? How can white apply the most pressure? Flinner, you're not allowed to answer. This is a nice one to have in your arsenal if you don't remember this one. Yeah, it's an absolutely classic pattern. So this position is slightly different from like the classic. Yeah, there's a reason I didn't say white to play and win, but still, um, good pressure here. Good pressure. No suggestions. Sad. Everyone is confused. Very sad. I'll give it one more minute, and one more minute will show. Rook e8. Uh, rook e8, I'm assuming that's rook d8. Aaron saying rook d8. Absolutely, rook d8. Yeah. Um, so, of course, the point is you cannot take this as you are losing a queen. So after rook d8, you are forcing bishop f8. Notice that knight e8 is not possible because then I take it again. Uh, whereas the difference here is after bishop f8, if white takes, black can take with the king and not lose sight of his queen. So rook d8 forces bishop f8. Now we take here. And it turns out, okay, black has regained his pawn, but he has some uncomfortable like jitters going on with this bishop being pinned. Um, and he has to start thinking about, is there going to be a problem of him just losing this bishop? Um, so I think this is a really important moment. SP, what would you play for black here? I think this... Or, sorry. Uh, 
White had a move here. White played the move g3. Let me just process why we're playing. Oh, we're, we don't want to get back rank mated. That's why we're playing g3. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, ideal. Um, so important critical moment here. What would you play as black? Yeah, so there's a couple of things going on. So... We go for something like this. Here. Then there's the bishop. And yes, that looks unfortunate. Right. I agree. And, like, we want to move our king out of this pin. But we can't play g6 because that's another one. Also unfortunate. Um... So it's tricky. Uh... We're also kind of worried about... Oh, I can't draw arrows. Like, this kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. Like a bishop take? Yes. Um... And this is all stuff that should be evaluated before playing rook d8. Um... Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you do have to look a little bit, because otherwise, like, if you don't have any pressure, then, like, black has an active rook that can start taking things as well. Exactly. So, uh, um, I just want to point out something. I don't know. I'm stuck. <laughs> Ch uh, Chess Doofus suggested that in this position, white can play knight e5 because the bishop is defending c1. I think that's not quite true because I think um, black can go h6 here. And the problem is, if you take this, you're actually a move too slow. I get in first. Um, and if you go back... Well, if you go back, you're not threatening knight d7 at all, because you're not threatening to take my knight. So I don't think knight d5 uh, works right away. Yeah, and I can start taking things or whatever. Well, um, maybe not. Oh, I don't have bishop c5, do I? I was hoping for this. But of course I'm hanging yeah. mate. Yeah. Um, so I, I like g3. It's just a calm move, reinforcing the threats. Um, so um, I would play h6. Uh, yeah. Right, because like you said, I I like have to move my king. It's a t it's a total disaster, um, and it seems like the only way for me to get the king going is to play h six. And if I, a, a, do I have anything? Yeah, ninety five, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you have nothing. I think you're worse. Where's this knight going? I take a2. Yeah. Very sad. I think you're worse. Hmm. I think h6 is, is good. Um... I think you, you, I don't know, you drop your bishop back you here. Drop back, yeah. And then my whole point is to play g5 and king g7. But now... Uh, thank you. Ah, tricky. What if I go here first? Oh no, that's blocking my own bishop. Um, what if I go here? King g7. Then I win two pieces for the piece, right? Oh, you do, but do you like that position? Uh, yeah. Oh, no, uh, sorry. I, th I thought it was two pieces for the rook. Excuse me. Um. Yeah, I win a piece, sorry. So yeah. yeah. I'm saying. Uh, okay, that's tricky. I didn't see this. I go... Hmm. That is actually annoying. Flinner, I saw, I saw your comment. We'll, we'll get. We'll look at that next. Um, yeah, I'm Bishop not. D4, knight E4. What? So he's going on the attack. Yeah. And nothing. Nothing disastrous is happening here. It feels like something disastrous is happening. What is my cat upset about? My cat is meowing. My cat. Come here. We could go here. Uh, mm. 
and I go... Oh, okay. Well, 97 is no longer mate, actually. Yeah, this looks like it's kind of holding. Yeah, because my main defense against this... Uh, yeah, okay. I think it holds together. It's a little bit messier than I wanted. Um, but it does appear to hold together. Um, Flaneur also suggested, instead of h6, knight d5. And I'm going to assume that his point after knight e5 is that he's playing f6. Well, it's not really, though. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit matey. Well, I can play this. Ooh, can you? Yeah, because you have too much stuff hanging. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, K Knight moves. Uh, you you missed your game. I'm very sorry. I'll, I'll I'm gonna upload it to YouTube right after this because I it was lazy and didn't upload the last one, so you can watch. Yeah, this and I. Uh, uh hold on. This might be okay, but I think I had King E seven. This. Then I take here. And then I, t I take this. Take. And I have. Is this good? Well, it's a better structure than last time. Mm, yeah, and you're going to mess up my. Also, structure. where's your bishop going? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> gotcha. That's sad. That's sad. Uh... It's going to e3, but then, you know, I, sh I, I shouldn't be. In? King f5. No, probably not. Um, yeah, sad. Okay. Looks like a looks like a mess. So okay, yeah, this this actually looks like better than the H six line to me. It looks a little bit less. Well, okay, I shouldn't say less complicated, but it looks a little bit less strange. So this was interesting, and then okay, he he can take like this as well. Oh, this might be the way to play actually, something like this. Hmm. I don't know, can I go king f7 and make a draw? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, this is messy. Okay, so in the game, black played the move rook c5, which I think has to be considered an error. Um, and you can't really blame black, because black is like seeing this threat and taking. Um, but there were more active ways to defend against the threat. And you're not really, you're not solving the problem of this pin long term. That's what I was trying to do with h6. So rook c5, I think, is a is a pretty big mistake. And after this, white gets a cruising initiative. Bishop b3, hits the rook. Rook b5. So I really don't like this move. And the reason I really don't like this move is you're not threatening what you say you're threatening. If you ever say you're threatening something, and you're not threatening that thing, that's really bad. So, black is claiming that he's threatening a4, takes, takes, and rook takes b3. But this is not a threat, because if I play a4, you can't take this. So, the rook on b5, to me, just appears to be misplaced, because you're not actually making the threat that you're claiming to make. Maybe rook d5 instead. Yeah, I think that looks more logical. You have to stay on the fifth rank is kind of annoying. Yeah, but rook d5, either you trade rooks or you can get... You can sort your king out. <laughs> do do you sort trade. your king out? Well, now you have, like, knight, this kind of thing. Okay, yeah, you do sort your king out. Um, is... Is this okay for you? As black? Yeah. I think this must be a draw for me. Yeah, you're right. So, let me find a better way to play. I guess... What about... This one is something? I want to guard this square, right? Oh, no, but that's not going to work. Because you're going to have rook takes. Okay, yeah. So you go rook a8. Black goes knight d7. Mm. 
Rook d5, Rook a8, and Knight d2 to c4 was my plan. Yeah, that looks good. That looks like a good move. This is why he's he's better than us. He is like he like maneuvers yeah, he, he maneuvers his pieces and like has technique and stuff. Knight d2 is a really good move. The knight is not doing anything. It goes to d2. Excellent choice. Yeah, no, this looks good. You know, g6, knight c4. If you lose the a pawn, you probably lose the game. But how do you hold the a pawn? Yeah, it's tough. Okay, so rook b5 played. Rook a8 makes sense. I mean, we're prophylactically stopping a4. Not that a4 was a threat, but we, we stop it anyway. Knight e4. I'm worried about my king. Yeah. I want to play g6, but g6 loses to bishop d4. I think. God, this is so hard to play. <laughs> Does it? Well, g6... Yeah, I think it does. Oh, uh, sorry. Go back, go back. Um, like, what do you, what do you, what move do you make here? So, I mean, yeah, but isn't this better? Oh, bishop h6. I'm sorry. I'm missing stupid, silly things. Yeah, no, this is here and then here and then. No, you lose on the spot. Here? No, but uh, come on, like, can't I do something like this? No, I can't. No, I don't think so. I can't. Uh, there's more to it. Uh, no, there's not. But the the rook is defended. Oh God! What a disaster I am today. There must be something here. Though. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's this one. Just bring bring more more dudes. Yeah, something like this. Yeah. Right. That looks bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, uh, rook a8, knight e4, I'm so worried about this king, but it's so hard to like figure out what to do about it. Knight d4, tempo, yep. Rook d5, knight c6, tempo. Brand. Rook d7, and now we simply take the a-pawn, and we have two connected passers on the queen side, which should be a winning advantage. f6, okay, black has finally solved his king, but it's come at too high a price. f3, Knight d6, bishop c5. This is cool. Yeah, nice little ideas. And after king f7, uh, Flunner found a, a nice way to simplify the game. So uh, white to play and just uh, pretty much eliminate all counterplay and simplify to an easy win. Of course, this is for chat in case chat didn't get the hint there. An easy win is relative. Simple win, put it that way. Sure, sure. E even even I could win it. That's that's your your context. Mm. I feel like even you couldn't lose it is the the more telling test. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> you have low opinion oh, of my chess abilities. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, I mean, it's easy to win. Not like you can win positions that aren't easy, but if you can't lose it, then it's easier. I don't quite understand what you're saying, but I'll go with it. It's it's not anything to do with you. Okay. I wasn't trying to be mean. No, that's fine. You're allowed to be mean. I'm mean to you sometimes. That that's true. <laughs> Any takers? I'll give it. I'll give it thirty more seconds. Tumbleweed. I was trying to think of the uh, the word for that last time we had a puzzle and no one was guessing. No, the uh, word tumbleweed? Dustball. Yeah, I kept thinking dust ball. That's not it, but I can't remember the word. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to show it because it seems like uh, we have no takers here. Um, White found rook takes f8. Abusing the pin. Uh, it's a nice simplification tactic. And uh, Flunner continued to show his strength. 
Um, one thing that, that strong players do is, you know, if you can't get out of the pin, I don't take it, right? Instead of taking pin pieces, we want to put pressure on pin pieces. So black is not threatening to move the knight. No need to take it. Just improve the position. And uh, black has a pretty big problem here, actually. Like, how is he going to unpin himself? Unclear, right? Yeah, and actually, like, f4 has a specific purpose, because one way to unpin would be to play e5, right? Yeah, so black played e5, and here I actually got a little bit confused, because white took here. Um, isn't this just, like, crushing? Mm -hmm. How do you get... The how do you get the king in? You have to go like all the way around. Here. No, I, I put the king on d5. Oh. Well, so the. Yeah, I you put the. You can't get to d5. You can't get to Yeah, you know, I, I realized. I bring the king to c6, right? Yeah, it's nice. You have to go like all the way around. It's This is what we call an eternal pin. This is actually something. It has a real name. It's called an eternal pin. Um, black simply pin. cannot break the pin. I'm just worried about any sort of e4 ideas yeah if we were on the king all the way up to here but then can we just play like knight takes keeping the pin flinner flinner correctly says everything wins which is true but this is prettier flinner did you know that uh chess chess awards points for style and this is the most stylistic move no he's right though i mean after f takes e5 he's also winning so I, we, we shouldn't really criticize this. Um, I just like f5. It's so pretty, the eternal pin, right? Yeah, you never know. If you play something like f5, they might just resign. Yeah, I mean... So you save some time. What, what move do you make as black? Uh, you, tr you, you try this, right? And then I go here. h5, x glam. Yeah, and then I go here. <laughs> No, no, no. Then you take. Why? Because you can promote. Can I? Okay, but now we just trade, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, see, I can lose this position. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, g6, g4, h5, h3, and then black struggles to make moves. Like, I think you have to wait like this. Rook d8, rook d7. That appears to be the only move you can make in the position. <laughs> which is amusing. Anyway, uh, enough about this. Uh, white took, which is totally fine. Takes, takes, bring the king. Very good. In the endgame, we bring the king. Okay, white was, or sorry, black was threatening to unpin, so we win the piece. Black keeps the rook, which is the correct decision. Um, if he ever wants to draw, he needs to have pieces on the board. The king and pawn offers absolutely no drawing chances. A3, bishop b4, white consolidates his pieces, and now he simply has to bring his king into the game and push his queen side. Uh, Funer also mentioning that in this position, black can unpin with king d7, forcing you to take the piece, and then you get sort of a similar idea. Um, takes a3, yep, we're consolidated, we bring the king, we... Sure if you're not planning to take back, you can move the king wherever, right? Uh, yeah, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> we start pushing our queen side, everything is super logical, there's not really a real access point for this rook, it can go to c2, but it's not doing anything on c2, uh, and white is simply pushing his pawns, and perhaps threatening to come and take some weaknesses if they ever march for it. Pawns go. H4. Looking to soften up the king side over here. Also, maybe planning to move his knight and not hang his h pawn. Makes sense. Chasing the rook. And we're threatening to play b4. All very logical. The queen side moves as a unit. The knight comes, now all of a sudden there's this threat of going knight f6 and taking the king side. 
we win a pawn. I'm just speeding through this because everything is very logical and pretty straightforward. Your technique was pretty lousy. This looks good to My me. Technique is pretty lousy. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, everything's coordinated. You're not dropping any material. I think he means a little bit later because he he went he like sacked these pawns if I remember correctly, uh, okay. which I didn't love. B4 check, King E3, Rook D5, King F4, King A6, Bishop D2. Yeah, and here he gave up B the B pawn, which I think was a little bit unnecessary. I think. What seems to be the easiest win in my eyes is to simply play knight d6. And the point is, I'm just gonna. Well, I was just gonna bring my king to c5 actually. Because I have these past, past queenside pawns, I wanna get them rolling. So I need to cut off the file so my king can cross. And once my king gets to like one of these two squares, I'm just gonna be in business. Oh, you're. I'm sorry, I thought beast. B5 was hanging this pawn, but B5 immediately is also just like a monster move. So yeah, knight D6 looks like it's pretty crushing. After knight C5 though, yeah, it's a little bit annoying. The king is well tucked in, shall we say. But this should, I mean, this should still be winning. Everything should win. Bishop F4, why was this necessary? Ah, because our bishop was hanging. Yeah, unfortunate. Here, but is... Also unfortunate. Oh, we could go here. Yeah, but then everything is pinned and sad. I don't know. This looks this seems still okay. We can yeah. we can unpin though. It seems fine. Yeah, so I don't it's... think we had to play bishop f4. I agree, but it uh, shouldn't be too bad. Just making it a little messier than needs to be. King takes b4, knight e6. The problem for black is that uh, white is simply going to come and take the other set of pawns. Yeah. We'll try it again on this side of the board. Reset. Do over. I win h5. Oops. Table base came up. Go away, table base. Knight f6. And now the h pawn runs unstoppably. <laughs> h7, that's funny. Not even taken back. Yeah, just, you know, eh, whatever. And a fork to end the game. Nice game from Flinner. So takeaways from this game, uh, the opening was far too passive. Um, if you're going to play this Rubinstein, sign, you need to play knight f6 here and then go c5. Uh, bishop e7 is too passive of a square for the bishop straight out of the opening. Um, nice counterplay that black found here, uh, getting some files open on the queen side. I don't know, any takeaways here? I didn't have much here. No, I mean, honestly, the game is higher level than I play, so... Yeah, I think I think from here the the one last takeaway. Oh yeah, this nice move, uh, thematic tactic, uh, realizing that the pin is going to be very strong in the ending. And then the last thing I had here was Black needs to really spend some time and solve his problems. And after Rook takes C two, um, Black needs to really spend some time and solve some solve his problems. And his main problem is his king. So I think H H six is very logical here. Um, and I would have liked to see the black player, I think, take a little bit more time here. He spent quite a good amount of time. He spent seven minutes. But you got to find a good solution here. It's now or never. And rook c5 is not a good solution. I think after rook c5, the game is pretty much gone. Any other takeaways? No. Interesting game. Um, well played to both players. Yes, GG to all six players we reviewed. I will have this up on YouTube in no time at all. And uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Flinner, for playing such a wonderful game. Um, and hope to catch you later. Uh, say goodbye to our lovely audience. Something pretentious. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.